how that past investor found the person and how much they're making so they can compare it to what they think they should be making. And this operator continues to bring on other operators and ask the wrong questions that adds no value to the right person that they're actually trying to attract. And you might be making this mistake on your podcast. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. Hey, podcaster. It's Adam Adams, your podcast coach. And right now we're going to talk a little bit about talking with your listener. Ask your listener some feedback and some advice. And this can feel scary. It can feel scary because maybe you only have a couple of listeners. It can feel scary because maybe you're fearful of what they might say. Are they going to say good stuff or are they going to say bad stuff? Are they going to be happy about what you're doing? Are they going to be sad about what you're doing? And if they're sad, are you going to take it too seriously? Are you going to quit your podcast? Is it going to affect you in that way? So it can feel a little unnerving in order to reach out to your listener. You might not even know right now where to find the listener, how to get a hold of them, or how many are there. I want to think through this with you because by getting feedback from your listener, you're going to be able to know how to pivot, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what can change. I've been doing that, especially around this time because of all these biohacking episodes that you're hearing. And my thoughts and my nerves and my thinking of, I think that this stuff is important. I know that it helps everybody in all things. But is it really what my listener's thinking? Is it really what my listener wants to hear? And so as I think through this, I'm technically or I honestly scared. I'm actually scared because I'm like, I don't want to hear that it's bad because I'm so passionate about it. And I'm thinking through this with you and the things that are going on with your podcast. And I'm thinking, hey, this is a great learning lesson at this point where I am with my podcast. It might be where you are with your podcast, but in totally different ways. You might not be talking about biohacking. It might be something else. You might be a syndicator. If you don't know what that means, it's okay. Syndicator means that you raise a whole bunch of money to buy a business or buy an investment, a real estate property or something like that. So you might raise money from a lot of different people and syndicate, do a private placement memorandum. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. It doesn't matter. The point being, if you're this type of person and you have a podcast, one of the most common mistakes I see that person doing, making, is they go in and they put out content that is good for somebody who operates a deal. The syndicator is the operator. That's the point to this. The syndicator is the general partner. And there are limited partners who add their money. They want to be part of this business venture. They want to be part of this real estate venture. And so they say, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I have a lot of money sitting here. I want it to be working for me. And so I'm going to put it with somebody. And then this syndicator, this person who operates these deals, these real estate deals, or these business ventures, these mergers and acquisitions, whatever it is, the operator, the general partner is trying to attract passive investors. That's their real, their mentality, their goal is, hey, I can find these deals. All I need is enough money from other people, OPM, other people's money in order to close on these transactions. So I'm good at finding them. I'm good at running them. And all I need to do is attract the capital. But what they do on their podcast is they ask the wrong questions. They bring on the wrong guests. So think with me, how does this apply to you? There's a way that this applies to you. If I'm an operator of a deal and I'm teaching people on my podcast how to operate deals, then who am I adding value to? I'm adding value to general partners. And who do I actually want to add value to? I want to add value to limited partners. I want to attract other people's money. And so this common mistake for a lot of syndicators uh, out there is they start asking people, hey, how did you find that real estate deal? How did you find it? What did you do to talk to the real estate broker that gave you that deal? How did you smooth them over to make sure that they gave you the good stuff? And the passive investor, the limited partner, doesn't care about that. That person only wants to know, how do I find the operator? 
how do I vet the operator or make sure that that operator, that general partner is going to protect my money, that they have a good track record? These are the types of questions that the high net worth individual who just wants to place capital into these syndications, that person only wants to learn how to be a safe investor. They only want to hear from other passive investors and how that passive investor found the person and how much they're making. And so they can compare it to what they think they should be making. And this operator continues to bring on other operators and ask the wrong questions that adds no value to the right person that they're actually trying to attract. And you might be making this mistake on your podcast. I've got a client and a friend. The client's first name is Kathy and the friend's name, he's in a mastermind group with me and Kathy's was in a mastermind group and then she ended up working with us. Anyway, we've got Kathy and then we've got Matt. We have an issue because both of them have had a podcast for years and years and years. Matt, my friend and a person that was in the mastermind with me, had a podcast in the real estate space and Matt continues to talk about the same very simple things, the same three ideas or four ideas that he can think of that his perfect avatar, a brand new real estate person, somebody who wants to get into it, needs to know. And then when we got Kathy, on the other hand, who ended up being a client for a while and still is a really good friend, we got Kathy who started to just think that her podcast was boring her. It was feeling basic. She wanted to give more and more value, especially as she learned and as she grew in also the real estate space. As Kathy was learning and growing in in her field, she wanted to go higher and higher level. Now, here's what was happening. Matt continued to add a value to the correct person. And so he continued to attract new listeners. Now, maybe Matt's not keeping the same listener from seven years ago because they've already grown to a certain level. And so he, in a way, loses them as a listener, that one person that got all the value that they needed from the first hundred episodes that they listened to. And then we've got Kathy, who is in her mind a little bored of it. And in her mind, she's trying to keep adding value to her listener as her listener learns and grows and gets to the next step, right? And the problem is that both seem like good ways, both seem like bad ways. But the end result, if you're adding value to the right person, if you're asking your listener what they're looking for, if you're sending out surveys, doing a Google survey, doing SurveyMonkey for free, if you are reaching out, if you're sending your link to people that you think are your perfect listener, they're a limited partner, they are a podcaster, they are a new real estate person, if you're asking them what they're looking for, Matt would have learned that his perfect person was loving the content. Kathy would have learned, and it also showed in their statistics. Kathy would have learned by asking her person, and that person would have said her listener, her avatar would have said, I feel stupid when I listen to this because you're going way above my brain. Now, she made the mistake because she's thinking, okay, I've done over a thousand episodes. I've been on radio for all of these years. I've spoken at all of these conferences. So she's thinking like, I know this information. And she's thinking my listeners heard all of my thousand episodes so far. But that's usually not the case. As she goes bigger and bigger and bigger, she's starting to talk above the head of her perfect avatar, the person that she actually wants to attract. And unfortunately, she stops gaining new listeners. And because it's been years and years and years, she loses some of the other listeners as well. So her listener base went from something like 120,000 downloads per episode to like 40-ish thousand downloads per episode over the course of a few years as she was going above her avatar. She was confusing the perfect person that she wanted to attract. They felt like this podcast wasn't for them because it was too above where they really were. While Matt, my friend from my mastermind group, not my mastermind group, one that I pay for and he does too, Matt continues to stay basic, not to say it in a bad or offensive way. And as he continues to stay at the level of his perfect avatar, it more of a basic level, he continues to gain traction and more and more people are sharing his podcast. 
because it's something that really helped them to get to that first level. So you should be thinking about this as well. How do you do that? What do you do? And if it comes down to it, why don't you ask your listener? Why don't you send it out to somebody who you think is your perfect avatar? Like, hey, John, why don't you check out this podcast? Tell me what you think. Is it above you? Is it below you? Is it what you needed to hear? Is it done in the right way? And I hope that you take this idea of reaching out to your perfect listener or your perfect avatar and asking them what they think about your podcast and the value that you're giving to them. That will help you be a better podcaster. And I will see you on the next episode. Don't go away. I'll see you right now. You're not alone if you're ready to either get your very first affordable microphone or if you're ready to upgrade your equipment to some legit podcasting studio equipment. Because on all of the forums over the last few months, I'm seeing this all the time. Even my own personal clients that work with my team, they're ready to get that next microphone. They're asking us for it. Additionally, when I'm on discovery calls with potential clients, they're always asking for this stuff. Hey, what mic do you recommend? Hey, what lighting do you recommend? What webcam should I be using? So many questions. And so what we did, my whole team has put together a PDF so that if you're one of those people who is looking to either get your very first affordable microphone or if you're ready to upgrade your equipment to more professional podcast studio equipment, whether it's soundproofing or whatever, we've got you covered by going to growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. And you can download the PDF for free or right there on the webpage is everything that you would have and you don't need to download the PDF. Either way, just go to growyourshow.com forward slash PDF, which will put you to the podcasting equipment that me and my team have personally vetted. I'll see you on the next episode.